utilities have huge incentives to see this country make the transition. For starters, our industry can't solve environmental challenges alone. We've got to partner with the transportation sector. For us, electrification is a chance to provide revenues needed to support continued investment in the grid of the 21st century while keeping our rates affordable. For the autos, the aggressive mileage targets of the one national standard, the equivalent of 54 miles per gallon by model year 2022, will be very difficult, if not impossible, to meet unless the autos sell more EVs. So really, we are joined at the hip, or probably more precisely, we're joined at the electric drivetrain. Um, thus, both industries have to lead by example. Utilities operate huge fleets of vehicles. In fact, PG&E is one of the largest vehicle fleets in the country. Um, I own 14,000 vehicles. About 1,200 of those vehicles have some sort of electric drive technology. I also want to point out that we do more than just purchase vehicles. We help drive innovation. For example, we led the development and deployment of hybrid electric bucket trucks. More recently, we're developing and testing new electric trucks that have the ability to export power, which means that they can be used to keep the lights on while we're doing repairs to the system. So think about that. Mm. As soon as that PG&E or DTE truck rolls into your neighborhood, the lights go back on almost immediately while the repair is in progress, being supplied by the uh, truck exporting power. And the concept goes beyond utilities. Uh, how about that new F-150 or Silverado at your tailgate party that can power your flat screen TV, music system, electric smoker, whatever else you want to hook up. I mean, that is really revolutionary. Uh, as PG&E and other utilities bring these vehicles into our fleets, we're proving that they work and that they're economically beneficial. We're also helping to create the scale needed for our automakers to innovate with new platforms and designs. Today, the autos don't make money on EVs. And in the last decade, we learned the hard way that products with negative margins, no matter how cool they are, just aren't going to hack it. So PG&E's vision is to work with the OEMs to develop electric products that industrial America is going to clamor for. And that's exactly what we're doing. A couple of weeks ago, 70 of the biggest companies in our industry, including uh, DTE and, and myself, uh, we joined at the White House to announce a new commitment to step up our purchasing of electric vehicles for the use in our fleets. It's not only passenger vehicles, but the electric hybrid rocket trucks, front loaders, and other specialized equipment. Each of these utilities has agreed to dedicate at least 5% of its annual spending on plug-ins. the next five years, that will mean over $250 million in spending. And some companies will far surpass that. Right now at PG&E, we're spending about 15% on electric vehicles. But the big payoff is yet to come. Light trucks are the best-selling vehicles in the country. And they're the, also the workhorses at utilities, construction companies, and dozens of other industries. We're working with the autos to develop enough commitments to plug in versions of these vehicles so that they can justify the development costs. Another step on the utility side, 